Good evening, everyone. I think we're pretty much on quarter pass. Let's make a start. I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's meeting of the uh, Planning Committee A. My name's Danny Kendall. I'll be chairing tonight's meeting in accordance with the rules and procedures as set out on the inside cover of your agendas tonight. Uh, before we get started, if I could just uh, make members of the public aware of the fact that the meeting is being recorded. So in the next day or so, if you want to review tonight's proceedings, you can do so by going to the Council's website. If I could also remind members of the public to make sure, and I suppose committee members as well, to make sure that, mem uh, that your mobile phones are turned off or at least to silent, that would be fantastic as well. Um, before we go to our first item, can I ask people on the top here to introduce themselves, please? Thank you, Chairman. Ms. Javorska, Committee Services. Ross Chambers, Legal Services. Dale Barker, Planning Manager. Amy Fleet, Planner. Louise Coleman, planner, senior planner. Thank you. Before we go further, could, uh, Dale, can I just get you to explain your role in this as planning manager, please? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, my role is to provide impartial advice to members, to clarify any planning issues that arise, and to assist members' decision taking. I'm bound by the Royal Town Planning Institute Code of Professional Conduct, and of course, planning committee members are not bound by any advice from officers or by their recommendations. Thank you, Chair. That's wonderful. Thank you. So we move to our first item on the agenda. Any apologies for absence, please? Yes, Chairman. Thank you. We have apologies from Councillor Barnes and Councillor Jennings. And Councillor Crump is substituted for Councillor Jennings. And thank you very much, Councillor Crump. Right. Uh, item two, disclosure of interests. Anybody? Councillor Parry. Thank you and good evening, Chair. Um, just wanted to highlight something. I don't believe it's um, a conflict of interest, um, but the application reference DISCN forward slash 00304 forward slash 18, the land adjoining Church Farm Court, um, the company that I, I work for two days a week, have in the past been involved with some projects with the applicant, but to my knowledge we're not involved, but I just felt I ought to raise that. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm coming to the committee with, a, with an open mind. That's fantastic, thank you. Any further disclosure of interests? No. Uh, the minutes, I understand, have been approved uh, at last meeting, so we don't need to deal with those. So that takes us to our first application tonight, which is item four, found on page 11 of your agendas. Right, this is application reference 18 slash 03300 slash FUL and is for Hill Farm, Stratford Road, Wooten Wowen, Henley and Arden and is for the construction of an agricultural workers dwelling with associated works to replace temporary agricultural workers dwelling. Uh, presenting officer on this is Amy Flute. Amy, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. The application site denoted by the black dot is a parcel of land accessed off the A3400. The site is within an open countryside location. The application site, edged red, is to the south of Sh Stratford Canal, is sited to the northwest. <coughs> sorry, the South Stratford Canal is sited to the northwest, and public footpath SD189 runs along the access track. The application site is within the Arden Special Landscape Area and is washed over by the West Midlands Greenbelt. Planning permission is sought for the erection of an agricultural workers' dwelling with associated works which would replace the on-site mobile home for an agricultural worker granted under a temporary permission. The existing mobile home can be seen to the south of the access track um, with the farm buildings to the north. The proposed dwelling would be two storeys with dormer windows on the roof and would measure approximately 7.6 metres to the ridge, 8.3 metres in depth and 14.9 metres in length, including the um, projections. The proposed dwelling would be constructed from brick tile with white aluminium windows and painted hardwood doors. Looking at the site in a southwesterly direction from the access drive, the existing mobile home can be seen in the distance. The farm buildings are situated to the south of this building and they cannot be seen. The existing mobile home can now be seen looking in an easterly direction and the northern site boundary can now be seen. So this image is looking down the access track in an easterly direction towards the A3400. And farm buildings can now be seen which are situated approximately 45 metres in a southerly direction from the existing mobile home. 
It is considered that there is a functional need to live on site and that the business is financially sustainable and the proposed rural work, workers' dwelling is considered to accord with core strategy policy AS10 and policy H1 of the NDP. Whilst the proposal is considered inappropriate development harmful to the openness of the green belt, it has been identified that there is an essential need for a worker to live on site, resulting in very special circumstances to outweigh the identified green belt harm to accord with core strategy policy CS10 and the MPPF. Chairman, the recommendation is to grant the application subject to the conditions and notes as detailed within the committee report. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Right, let's go to our first speaker. So our first speaker tonight is uh, Councillor Mark McCall from Wooden Warren Parish Council. Hello, sir. Would you like to please take a seat? Welcome. Right, so you have three minutes. Um, would you like a warning bell at the last 10, 20 seconds, something like that? Um, hopefully I won't need it. <laughs> All right, I'll, I might just chirp in just to help you out anyway. Um, if you'd remain seated for any questions at the end as well, is that okay? Okay, that's that fine. Yeah. Over to you. Yeah. Um, okay, while the additional information does show the need for some agricultural accommodation, it does not, doesn't demonstrate why this cannot be provided by the various properties already located on site. Uh, the Parish Council notes a history of residential development and the removal of previous long-standing agricultural ties on this site, which undermines the argument of the necessity of this application. There has been previous applications to turn the barn complex into residential dwellings, uh, breach of agricultural tie and removal of agricultural tie on a previous chalet bungalow. Um, the application doesn't demonstrate why this need can't be met by the existing properties. Uh, the additional information does demonstrate that continuous 24-hour cover is only required during the lambing period. Other occasions, such as to provide medication to sick animals, will be ad hoc. The seasonal and otherwise intermittent nature of the requirement is precisely why temporary accommodation such as is currently there could be an appropriate solution. Due to its location in the Green Belt, even if one accepts the argument for the permanent dwelling, planners and parish council must still consider the impact on its surroundings when approving the design. Uh, on that basis, the introduction of a large modern four bedroom, two storey family property into this rural setting is inappropriate. Uh, to protect the conserve the green belt, a smaller single storey design with perhaps two bedrooms would be much more appropriate and would still provide the required accommodation. The location of the proposed site is away from existing buildings, uh, uh, residences, which means that the site and hill farm is getting quite spread out. Um, last time I was in front of this committee a few months ago, um, we were talking about Lucy's Farm, which is across the road, across the A3400 from this application, um, and a, another local farmer was refused uh, development on that site, uh, even though there's an existing building, so it seems contradictory to um, approve this one. If the committee is in mind to grant this application, the Parish Council would ask that there is a minimum period for the agricultural tie. Um, of at least 10 years or longer. Um, there's also a question about the community infrastructure le levy, um, which should be payable, but the applicant has um, asked for exemption, um, which does question about what the property will actually be used for. Perfect timing, actually. Thank <laughs> you very much. Okay, uh, does the committee have any questions? Oh, Councillor McCall, I've got, oh, right, <laughs> Councillor Crump. Hi, um, Councillor McCall, you mentioned that there wasn't particularly any justica justification for this uh, dwelling in the location. Sorry, um, sorry. Uh, like a, you know, you're questioning the justification and the need for this application. Um, yet the District Council employs consultants, um, Kernan, um, I think it's on page 14 in the agenda, and they quite nearly, quite clearly say that the proposal meets the test for a permanent dwelling. So I'll just, obviously, we've got the consultants who we rely on, who are the experts, saying that there is the need, and you're saying as, a, as the local parish council that there wasn't the need. So I just wonder why you could justify that, please. Um, the, the consultants are provided by the applicant. Um, well, they're actually the council's um, consultants, but it's okay. Right. Um, yeah, I just question whether the, whether there, there is a need 
sufficient need to, to justify the desirable development in that property. Okay, that's fine. Are there any further questions from the committee? Yes, Councillor Dixon. <coughs> Do you understand that there are other residential accommodations within the same ownership? Um, there are, I'm not sure about ownership. Um, it's a bit unclear as to who owns what on that site now. I'm with you. Okay, thank um, you. Any further questions? In that case, Councillor McCall, thank you very much okay. for your time. And we can move to our next speaker, uh, Mr. David Armour, the applicant. Hello, welcome. Right. Are you here, Madam? Sorry, are you here just to answer questions? Or? <laughs> okay. I think we can. I think we can. We can go with that. That's okay. Welcome, then, Mr. Armour. Um, you have three minutes as well. If you remain seated for any questions at the end, and I'll give you a warning at 20 seconds if you need it. Yes. Yeah. In that case, over to you. Um, I, obviously, I'm David Emery. This is my uh, partner, Leanne. Um, I just wanted to speak to you, give you a little background about the farm. <laughs> Um, while it's fresh in my head, I'd just like to respond some, to some of the um, parish comments. As far as the Tide Bungalow, the Tide Chalet, it's never been in the ownership of me, my family at all. It was a totally separate dwelling um, that had our cultural tie. And we actually, I actually wanted to buy it, but it may over double the reserve price, and then the tie was removed. It's never had anything to do with us whatsoever. I just wanted to clear that up. Um, so, a little brief history. I've been farming on the farm for over 20 years. I inherited it 10 years ago from my late father, um, at which time was the just after the foot and mouth crisis. So, a lot of our, our stock was um, wiped out with that. So, I took the opportunity to restock, change our farming enterprise into a more, rather than producing beef and sheep for meat, it was more for breeding. So, we have a pedigree limousin herd, a pedigree Texel sheep herd that we then uh, produce the lambs and breeding animals to, and bulls to sell onto the farmers. It just makes the business a lot more, less susceptible to volatile market changes, basically, which is, has worked and we've become more successful over the last 10 years into quite a good profitable farm. In fact, we, we're, we're in the top 5% now of profitability on farms. Um, we've been in the mobile home now for eight years. Um, and literally, we, you know, we, we want to live there to run the farm. We have to be there for the lambing, for the calving, for all the assistance. And one of the one of the perfect examples is even now we've got a cow in now who's due to calve. At the moment, I've got to get up, get dressed, get in the car, drive down, check her. If it's all fine, home, back to bed. If you, if we, you know, if we're living on site, we can literally get up, put your wellies on, dress, go and look over the fence. Do it if it's needed, you can get on with it. If not, you can get back and live a normal life. And we just want to, you know, carry on farming there. And um, we've got, uh, we have five children all together, and they're all very interested in the farm. And I just hope that we can carry on, be successful, and hopefully they'll carry the farm on. Um, and that, that's pretty much all, of, all I wanted to say, to be honest. So just, <laughs> thank you. Right. Any questions? Councillor Parry? Hello and good evening. Um, do the, the, the cycles of your breeding and, the, and your different rare breeds and types of animals, yes. do they sort of run at, throughout the year or yeah, specifically? Yeah, if you so could just explain a little bit more about the times that you, you yes. probably need to be getting up in the middle <laughs> of the night. Yes. Um, so at the moment we've got um, 550 breeding ewes. So they lamb, we lamb in, sort of in, in batches, but they sort of run overlap. So we lamb from December until, until April, pretty much. And then the cows, we've got, uh, at the moment we've got 60 breeding cows, which we are upping, we've got a few heifers, which do carve all year round. So because they're quite, they're called high vigor, they're very, very, you know, well bred. So they, they, you do have a lot more involvement. With, with the carving, so because so pretty much it's it's pretty much all year round, and because we're doing it most you know mostly ourselves, you, you've got to spread the work out across the year because you can't cope at one time. Okay, okay, Councillor Crump. Right, um, you mentioned they have uh, breeding stock. Yes. Um, so, therefore, I assume the lambs and the calves are more valuable than if they were being bred for meat. Oh, a lot more, a lot more, yes. So therefore, if you lost one, 
um, by not being there, you would feel a greater financial loss. Oh, certainly, oh. certainly. I mean, we just well, we sold. Um, I sold a cow and a pedigree limousine cow with her bull calf last week for four thousand seven hundred pounds. Uh, the, about a month ago at Stony Market, the cows and calves were making between 800 and 1200. Okay. So it's a massive, it is a massive difference. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Adam. Thank you. Um, just um, a question in regard to the other buildings on the site. Are they yeah. currently fully used and occupied or any of those vacant any time? Uh, do, do you mean the farm buildings? Or yes. Yeah. Oh, they're all, they're all full of the stock or hay and that type of thing. There's, there's no. We've got the mobile home there, but all the other buildings are just bar barns with cows and sheep in, basically. <laughs> thank you. Right, if there are no further questions, thank you very much. Thank you, okay. thank you, thank you. <coughs> right, we now go to our ward member, Councillor Shenton. Welcome, Councillor Shenton. Councillor Richards, could I just ask you to turn off the microphone on, the, on that one there? Is that all right? Thank you. Yeah. Welcome, Councillor Shenton. So, Good um, evening. <laughs> you have uh, five minutes. Um, you don't feel you have to use all of it, um, but if you'd remain seated for any questions at the end, um, give you a warning at 30 seconds. Over to you. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Good evening, members and officers. Um, the application is for this one and a half uh, story high farmhouse type construction which would replace the existing mobile site and mobile home on the site. When the application was submitted I wasn't a councillor and my predecessor didn't make any representations. I understand the concerns of the parish council and the need to preserve the green belt, something that they and I feel very passionately about, but there's also the need to protect and help our farming community. There doesn't appear to be any suitable living accommodation on site and in reference to Lucy's farm, that was a much larger development and can't be compared directly with this particular application. My view is that the, uh, the planning application meets the MPFF guide on the need for sustainable development uh, of the economic objective uh, uh, paragraph. It also appears to meet the requirements of section 79 of the MPFF, which states that the um, that we should avoid the development of isolated homes in the countryside unless there is an essential need for a rural worker, including those taking majority control, to live permanently at or near their place of work in the countryside. And Section 83 appears to reinforce that as well. Mr. Moore is committed to the local area and economy because as well as providing employment through the farming, he's instrumental in developing the marina and diversifying on Hill Farm. Um, on that ongoing, there's ongoing construction there. The applicants lived in a mobile home for a number of years, uh, and as such it seems to, on the face of it, demonstrate a need for an agricultural worker to live on the farm itself. The site itself is well outside the built-up boundary of Wooten Mowing, and whilst it's in the green belt, it's set so far back from the main road along the track that it's not close enough to any neighboring properties to cause any major concerns. Indeed, a couple of the closest properties uh, actually are in support of the application. You'll see that there's confirmation that the farm is viable and in the light of the reports uh, uh, suggests that it would make sense to have a dwelling located on the farm itself, on the core of the farm. The character of the design is such that any impact will be mitigated by the one and a half story type design and it fits within the overall plot that's being used for temporary building. There's an argument perhaps that the current arrangement is more of a blot on the landscape than the proposed building and the new building would add more in benefit to the landscape than it takes away in terms of openness of the green belt. We should protect the openness of the land but the harm if any is limited and the greater benefit is derived in my opinion from having an agricultural workers home on site to deal with the issues as they arise. Indeed, the campaign for rural England appeared to raise very little in the way of an objection now. It fits in with policy AS10 of the core strategy and does seem to fit in with policy H1 of the Wooten Wowing Neighbourhood Plan, which states that new houses in the countryside will be strictly controlled and limited to dwellings for rural workers, which is what this particular uh, application is about. To recap on my arguments for granting permission, the applicants currently living in a mobile home on the site. The planners appear to be comfortable with the scale and design. 
no objections from neighbours, the farm is viable, CPRE don't appear to have any great objections, it's, it's not at odds with the objectives, overall objectives of the MPFF, the core strategy, or the Wooten Way neighbourhood plan. So my feeling is very much that this application should be granted with two conditions, uh, namely that it should only be uh, for that of an agricultural worker as defined in the Town and Country Planning Act, and that permission for the temporary mobile home, which is currently on there, should be rescinded within an appropriate time after the completion of the build. Once again, I'd just like to stress that I understand the position of the Parish Council with regards to the effect on the Greenbelt, but would ask the committee to consider the special circumstances and support the planner's recommendation and grant the application. Thank you, Councillor Shenton. Any questions for our ward member? Ah, very lucky. Yeah, you've done well. In that case, thank you very much. Right, that's the speakers out of the way. Do we have any points of clarification? Councillor Richards. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, condition 13 says EVCP. I have no idea what that means. Could you explain? It's, sorry, should have probably put it in, um, in full English. Um, it's electric vehicle charging points. That does make a lot more sense. Um, and second, if I may, uh, Chair, is the, um, it, it's not uncommon for us to put some form of agricultural tie on uh, as a condition. I don't see one in there. Is there one? And if there's not, would it be prudent for us to include one? Um, on applications like this, we would be looking to um, tie the um, future, obviously, ownership to agricultural um, workers, and it is within the um, recommendations. It's, it's condition five, and it just says occupancy. <laughs> so presumably you'll expand on that as and when you actually issue? Yes, we, we've got standard wording, Fine. which we Sorry use. So. With that. Thank you. Any other points of clarification? Council Parry? No, Councillor Richards Beat raised the point I was going to raise. I'll just follow on on that really briefly. The, I mean, just to remind me, on, on if we have a requiring this to be tied to an agricultural worker, the parish council said they'd want it to be for at least 10 years. Wouldn't it be a permanent tie? It would be a permanent tie. Um, and if, uh, if there were any circumstances in the future why there was a potential reason why that tie was no longer required, um, they would, um, the, the occupants would have to apply for planning permission to us and then we would assess whether or not it was reasonable for the tie to be removed um, and they would have to submit marketing information and we would have to be comfortable that the farm was no longer viable. So they are there and enforced. Thank you. Any other points? Clarification? Are we done? Should we go to the debate? Councillor Richards and Councillor Parry. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, so I'm, I'm going to propose that we do go um, ahead and grant this as set out in our report. Um, I think the report is very well reasoned and uh, in particular the evidence required through the Kerns report provides me with sufficient, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Evidence, I guess, uh, um, that uh, the tests are met to permit this as a, um, uh, you know, as a special circumstance in the Greenbelt. So I propose we grant. Thank you. Councillor Perry. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I feel very satisfied by what I've heard this evening from the applicant. Um, I think that has reinforced up the professional evidence that we've had mm -hmm. because of the need around the 12 months. And I think the ward member made an excellent case in support of the application, so I'd like to second Councillor Richards' proposal uh, for granting application. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak in the debate on this? No? Right, well, let's go to the vote then, shall we? Um, we've got a proposer and a seconder that say that we grant the application. Uh, all those in favour, please show. Unanimous chairman. Thank you very much. In that case, the committee resolves to grant application reference 18 slash 03300 slash FUL. We can move to our next application. Okay. That is item 5. We found on page 23 of your agendas tonight. So. <clears throat> Right, application reference 18 slash 02244 slash FUL, and this is for the land rear of 225A High Street, Henley and Arden, and is for the demolition of an existing garage and office and the construction of one new dwelling. 
Presenting officer is Amy Flute again. Amy, if you're ready, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. The application site donated by the black dot is a garage with office above within the garden area of 225A High Street, Henley and Arden. The site edged red has its own access off Prince Harry's Road to the east. The application site is within Henley and Arden's built up area boundary, their conservation area and also there are a number of listed buildings to the west along the high street which are coloured in red. Planning permission is sought for the erection of a dwelling in place of the garage. An aerial photo with the site edge red um, shows the site in the context of the existing built form. The proposal will demolish the existing garage building and erect a dwelling which will be set further west of the plot off Prince Harry's Road with off-road parking. It must be noted that 225A has separate off-road parking provision off the high street. The existing garage building measures approximately 8.4 metres in width, 7.4 metres in depth and 6.4 metres to the ridge. The design of the proposed dwelling has been amended during the course of the application. The proposed dwelling would be set on slightly higher ground, sl slightly higher land level, measuring approximately 7.7 .7 metres in width, 14.1 metres in depth and 6.8 metres to the roof's ridge. Gables would front the highway and the dwelling would be constructed from timber and render. The proposed dwelling can be seen in a street scene context with the immediate properties to the application site fronting Prince Harry's Road. The dwelling would have living space at ground floor and three bedrooms at first floor. The existing garage office is constructed from red brick, tiles and timber doors. The gables do not front the highway. The rear of the garage has a central dormer window and is set down from the grass garden area of 225A High Street. This view is taken from the rear garden of 225A, looking in a southerly direction, and shows the dwellings fronting Prince Harry's Road, and now looking in a northerly direction. This image is looking in a westerly direction from the application site towards the rear of 225A High Street. The properties to the south of the application site off Prince Harry's Road vary in size, style, and design. The apartment block immediately south of the application site can now be seen, which is set in a more easterly direction off Prince Harry's Road on slightly higher land level. The next two images are looking in a southerly direction from Prince Harry's Road towards the application site. The site can now be observed looking in a northerly direction from Prince Harry's Road. The principle of a dwelling is acceptable in this location and it is considered to accord with core strategy policy CS15 and CS16. It is not considered that the proposed, proposed development would have a detrimental impact on heritage assets or the character of the street scene and accords with core strategy policy CS8 and CS9. Chairman, the recommendation is to grant the application subject to the conditions and notes as detailed within the committee report. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Right, first speaker on this application is Councillor David Broadbent, uh, Henley and Arden Parish Council. Welcome, Councillor. Hello. So the same rules apply. You have three minutes if you'd remain seated for any questions at the end, and um, I'll give you a, a warning at the last 30 seconds. Okay. Thank Over you. to you. This property belongs to uh, the current ward member, Matt Jennings. Um, the JPC has no objection to the erection of a new building on this site, and we believe our concerns regarding parking of vehicles has been addressed. However, the design of the building does not complement the, the street scene of Prince Harry Road or other properties in the area. The current design will be in stark contrast with existing properties in that area. The JPC Planning Subcommittee totally disputes the case officer's comment I note that the use of timber and render is not predominantly used within the street scene. There are some examples within the street scene and across the wider conservation area. I have photos available if people want to see them on my iPad, but they are just being shown there anyway. The properties on 47 and 49, these are simply boarded up to look like garage doors and not very successfully either. With regard to the wider conservation area, there are properties on the high streets which do have timber cladding. However, they are a blight on the high streets and your predecessors and my JPC predecessors should never have allowed them to be built in the first place. We should also allow this precedent to allow other carbon cores to be built in this lovely area. 
I'm sure everyone who's travelled down Henley High Street have seen the awful timber-clad blocks of flats and houses at both ends of the High Street, built in the 70s, which have no place in the conservation area of the High Street. The former uh, District Councillor Stephen Thurl also stated, the use of wood cladding has been reduced, but it might be seen as excessive by some. I would change that to by the majority of residents in the area. The design should be reconsidered and built in red brick, uh, as was the original garage, to, to blend in and complement the existing street scene. Finally, the CPRE also object on the basis of not being in keeping with the street scene in a sensitive location. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, any questions? I have just one. You say that the you believe this uh, application would be opposed by the majority of residents. You're aware we've got one letter of objection for this. But how do you well, justify your statement? Because we, we talk to the residents in the area at, when we have our planning meetings. Do you encourage them to write in and make an objection? Um, not every time. That's, we feel that's our job. Any other questions? Councillor Parry. Thank you and good evening. Can you advise what sort of level of engagement the applicant has made with the Parish Council? Obviously they've revised the designs. I'd just, just like to know in terms of the response to your concerns regarding the cladding. Yes, um, they, they have redesigned the roof structure, which is better, um, but we still object wholeheartedly to the timber cladding. It just doesn't fit in to that area at all and we've objected strongly again with him. Okay. Are there any other questions? In that case, Councillor, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next speaker, Count, uh, sorry, Mr. Roland Jennings, on behalf of the applicant. Either or, that's fine. Welcome. So, you uh, also have three minutes, if you'd remain seated for any questions at the end, and I'll give you a warning at 30 seconds, if you like. Over to you. I, I should say that I'm Matthew's father, and I'm acting as a messenger. So, I'm, I'm here to read uh, what he's put down as uh, his response to the, uh, the questions from the uh, Parish Council. The um, objections raised by the Parish Council Proposals are out of keeping with the conservation area and the design is inappropriate. <coughs> Matthew's reply on this is that the design is in keeping with others on Prince Harry Road. Three doors down, number 47 is completely wood clad and I saw that up on the screen. Number 26 is rendered and has wood cladding. On Prince Harry Road there are at least seven different designed houses and all houses have been built from 1980s onwards including an office block and a medical center. There are no listed buildings on Prince Harry Road. A block of flats was built next door to the proposed dwelling three years ago. The SDC planning report noted the characters of the main high street with its main, many historic properties and that of Prince Harry Road with its modern properties are distinctly different. However, even if you look at the High Street, number three High Street, which is also in the conservation area, is extremely prominent. This is rendered and wood clad and almost identical to our proposal. In fact, over 30% of the houses on the High Street are fully rendered even the Heritage Centre itself is completely rendered and has wood inlay. There are a number of other houses in Henley with exactly the same design. His response to the second objection, uh, which is there is too much massing on the site. Massing is a term in architecture which refers to the perception of the general shape and form as well as size of building. The new house will be set further back from the road compared to where current buildings 
where the current Thirty seconds. lies. This will bring it in line with the rest of the houses on Prince Harry Road. It will therefore not be obtrusive or stand out from others <coughs> when traveling down Prince Harry Road. The general shape of the house is the same as all others on Prince Harry Road. The mass size will be smaller than that of the block of flats built next door, which is on a smaller plot. Number 45, which is four doors down, is also substantially larger than the proposed new dwelling, as are a number of other houses on the same street. Mr. Jennings, I'm afraid your time has elapsed. I'm going to have to stop you there. Uh, has it? it is, that is three minutes now. <laughs> Thank Good you. Um, any question for me to state and be read? Uh, any questions for, the, uh, for Mr. Jennings? No. In that case, Mr. Jennings, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, we have no ward member for this one, so we go straight to points of clarification. Committee, do we have any questions you'd like to ask? Yes, Councillor Dixon. Knowing Prince Harry Road and the fact that it was developed relatively, I shall call it recently, in sort of 1980s, etc. Are we able to identify for me where the edge of the conservation area is? I can appreciate the high street is listed. The papers indicate that, Prince, that this is in the conservation area. I'm kind of surprised that Prince Harry Road is in the conservation area. So if you have a look at the map, you see this pink line here. That, that de denotes the edge of the conservation area. So it sits on the eastern boundary of the site. So this, the area to the east um, is not in the conservation area, and then all of the area um, to the north and the west is within the conservation area. If I may follow up, uh, Chairman. Um, would I be right in thinking that conservation area was possibly drawn before the development of several properties along in the rear gardens, back gardens of those properties on High Street? Yes. Okay. If there are, are there any other points of clarification? Councillor Adam. The, um, the photos of neighbouring property, properties again. Okay. Any other points of clarification? <laughs> Very quick. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, should we go to the debate? Who would like to start? Councillor Parry. Thank you, Chair. Um, I note in the report um, there's actually a letter of support from the neighbour, which is always an encouraging thing to see, that actually normally if you're going to get any objections, you actually get an objection from the neighbour. But um, one letter of support has been received from a neighbour, um, also, the conservation officer um, doesn't appear to have any problems at all um, with the design um, and the application. And therefore, on the grounds, I cannot see any um, material planning reasons to refuse this application. I therefore propose we go forward to grant. Thank you, Councillor Parry. Anyone else want to speak in the debate? Councillor Crum. Yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm just not unhappy to second Councillor Parry's proposal. Um, again, very few reasons to object. You, you look at the pictures and there's that, the garage that's been made into, you just go, call that, up, back. that one, that's the one, yeah. Uh, and you do just wonder. Um, so on balance, I'm happy to support and second the proposal. Thank you. Right, well, we have a proposition and a seconder. Unless there's anybody else who'd like to speak in the debate. I think I broadly agree with what, what our two councillors have said so far, actually. I can't see that this is going to cause any demonstrable harm to the street scene at all, really. So, shall we go to the vote? It's been proposed and seconded. All those in favour? Unanimous, Chairman. Excellent. Thank you very much. That, in that case, the uh, committee resolves to grant application reference 18 slash 02244 slash FUL. <coughs> and we go to our final application. Uh, sorry, item tonight. Just going to give the room a few seconds to clear.
Okay. Final uh, application tonight is item 6 and found on page 33 of your agendas. This then is application reference DISCN slash 00304 slash 18 and is for the land adjoining Church Farm Court and Main Road, Main Street, Tyso. It's for the erection of 10 dwellings. Uh, presenting officer, Louise Coleman. Louise, over to you. Thank you, Chair. The application is in relation to the discharge of uh, materials condition number three in connection with the erection of ten dwellings. The application site are, is located on the northern edge of Middle Tyso Village and is identified by the black dot on the map. The application site outlined in red adjoins residential development known as Church Farm Court to the south and Red Horse Close uh, to the north. Tyso Conservation Area is identified by the pink line on the plan and nearby listed buildings shaded in red. The Cotswolds A and B is situated to the east on the opposite side of Main Street and a number of public footpaths are located to the rear and also opposite the site identified by the hatch green lines on the plan. This is the approved layout for the 10 dwellings. And this is uh, an elevation of the approved garages, which are approved to be uh, Haunton Stone. And the applicant is seeking to amend the materials used in four of the detached garages from Haunton Stone to horizontal timber cladding, and also use brick within the single garage at the bottom of the screen. The applicant is also seeking to amend the sill and lintel detail on some of the elevations of the dwellings from Haunton Stone to oak lintels and blue brick sills. So it's going from, uh, there's, there's the blue brick sills and this is the oak lintels, this is plot two. You can see the timber clad garaging in the rear. The applicant has provided an, illust an illustration of the site and timber cladding is proposed on the four dwellings located in plot two, three, four, and five, and also the single um, um, brick garage is located behind the rear of plot 10. The elevations of all three plots on the frontage of the sites, which front onto Main Street, will remain with Haunton Stone uh, sills and lintels. This is an elevation of plots seven and eight, which is within the site itself. You can see that plot seven is retained as original, and it's just plot eight, which is proposed to change with the timber lintels and brick sills. This is an elevation of the site with the uh, coarsed Haunton stone with um, um, stone sill. This is a, a photograph of the proposed uh, blue brick sill, which will be used on some of the properties. This is the uh, sample panel for the single garage. And this is the sawn horizontal timber cladding proposed on the detached garages. Now, these are some examples of um, these types of materials used within other developments within the village. All the dwell dwellings are within the Heritage Field Estate, which is on the uh, on the edge of the village um, of Oxhill Road also have blue brick sills and lintels. They also have timber lintels above the garaging here. This is on the site adjoining this application site, which is nine church farm courts, which abuts onto the side boundary of plot one. This is the garage for Keeper's Cottage, which is located in the middle of the village. This is a garage um, at Red Horse Close, again, adjoining the site. This is number one Red Horse Court, uh, sorry, Close, um, which is opposite the site, or adjoins the site. Um, this is more historic building within the middle Tyso village, which has a combination of stone and timber lintels. And again, another historic property with timber lintels. The uh, recommendation is to discharge condition three. 
Members, in debate, I would just like to, uh, you to remember that this application is only to agree the materials to be used to build these houses and garages. No other matters are relevant this evening. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Louise. Right, first speaker, Councillor John Tong uh, from Tysa Parish Council. Welcome, Councillor. Welcome. So you also have three minutes tonight. If you'd remain seated for any questions at the end, I'll give you a warning at 30 seconds. Over to you. Um, the site adjoins the conservation area, so as previously described, and is next to three grade two listed buildings, the home farm, the church farm, and the school, and in fact, the grade one St. Mary's Church. We consider this site to be particularly important as it's a lead-in road to Tyso and we're quite sensitive about the materials. Um, the applicant wanted to change the materials on, one, on two of the houses to Elias and he objected and he's changed his mind and gone back to Haunton. The parish council object to the use of the horizontal boarding on the four detached two-storey garage office buildings. They're detached and they, by reason of their um, height and their size and their mass would be visually odd and out of keeping with the surrounding stone buildings and we think it's inappropriate having the appearance of four very large tall garden sheds. The parish council considers that these buildings should be built in a coarse Horton stone as shown on the original scheme and be visually brought to ground by erecting stone garden walling linking the various stone buildings on site together. The parish council have no objections to the use of timber boarding on single storey buildings or those which are attached and subordinate to the two storey stone dwellings. But they do object to individually um, detached two storey garages. Parish Council also considers that the use of three different materials around some of the windows, i.e. stone jams, oak lintels and brick sills, too fussy and therefore inappropriate. Thank you, Councillor. Any questions from the committee? Right. In that case, Councillor, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now we can move to our next speaker. Um, uh, Mr. Archie Chitty Loxton, please. Welcome. Right. Thank you. So evening. you also have three minutes. The same rules apply. Over to you. Great. Uh, so I am from Boston Developments and I'm representing the application, no, the applicant on this discharge of condition three. In terms of architectural design, Tyso is a very diverse and vibrant village, all centered around Haunton Stone, stone but there's a whole manner of different materials, styles, and details around the village. When designing this project, our primary objective was to create a scheme that integrated into the village. We sought to use natural materials and details that were all found within the village. Our proposal is to use oak timber heads on some of the windows with blue brick sills. As we've seen earlier, those are all found within the village on recent developments and on older houses within, within the village. Another one that was, wasn't shown was Orchard Close, which is within the Middle Tyso Conservation Area, this is timber lintels on the windows with tar sills. Additionally, on Back Lane, there's a development which incorporates red brick heads and blue brick sills on some of the houses and on other houses. Um, within the same development, there are some with timber heads and blue brick sills. Even within the immediate context of our site, as we have seen, all the materials that we are proposing to use are relevant and within context. Around the village, um, as I've said, there are all manner of materials. There are timber heads with tar sills, um, especially around the village shop area. I would dispute the parish council's claim that the use of three materials around each window is fussy and not characteristic of local design. And the uh, council's conservation officer on their report also identified that it was within keeping with the village. The character of the village is derived from its eclectic use of materials and details rather than homogenous design. On the use of sawn timber boarding on garages, 
uh, as we've seen it, is found within the immediate context of the site, on the developments on either side and elsewhere within the village, and it is encouraged within the village design statement written by the parish council. I think on this basis, when they say um, that all, all other structures, outbuildings, abutments, or garages not built using natural stone should be constructed using new or reclaimed handmade facing bricks, red or orange in color, or large feather or wany edged timber cladding, exactly what we are proposing to use as a material. Um, for this reason, I believe their objection is unjustified. 30 seconds. When the non-material minor amendment was first submitted in March of last year, our case officers said they wanted the garage boarding to be left as natural timber and not stained. Precisely what we are doing now. I feel like my account of all this information and the case officer's report, the conservation officer's findings, and all other information submitted, that condition free of our application should be discharged. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Uh, we'll start with uh, Councillor Richards. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, was it your firm that originally applied for uh, permission, or have you acquired the permission post its approval? The there was permission on the land when my firm bought it, and then it was reapplied for um, about in 2016 to build 10 houses on. Okay. Um, the, the reason I ask that is clearly you've um, made a commitment to build in certain materials when you first applied for and you brought your yeah. permission. It's quite a significant change, particularly in relation to the garages and their styling and design. Why is there such a significant change now? So uh, the change was determined by we wanted to use a spike called Prime Oak, um, who have built garages all over the Stratford District Council uh, area or precinct, and we thought that they would be more in keeping, more barn-like, um, they're more rural than uh, stone garages, I would say. So, do you mind if I follow up? Um, so, ju just so I'm clear, having made a commitment to create stone garages, you've then chosen a, an oak provider to provide those stone garages, and that's why we're changing. Is that uh, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Okay. So we've we had the opportunity to change because of the discharge of conditions has, has taken so long, and so we decided to change at that point to create something that would be. We wanted something softer than the Haunton stone. It's quite harsh, and there's a lot of it in the development. Over 85% of the materials being used on site are, is Haunton stone. So we wanted something to be incorporated into it and soften the appearance of the whole development. Okay, Councillor Crump. Good evening. Will the change in materials, is it brought about by, you know, you said about the softer, softer appearance, etc. Or was it brought about uh, due to cost savings? Uh, basically, have you, you know, is the real basis behind this, are, are you doing it for the appearance and how it works? Or are, That's are the problem. I think I'm going to come in there. I mean, you're welcome to answer if you want, but I'm not sure it's a relevant but question to planning. Well, I'm, going to say it's, I'm concerned that you've come forward with an application that was approved with, with stone, which is material of a higher quality. Okay, I changed the question, sorry. Can you um, give us reassurance that the quality of the materials that you're using or want to use will be of a similar nature or, or uh, compared to the previous application? What's the difference in quality, basically? So there isn't really any difference in quality. It's more about aesthetics than the quality of the materials. They're all natural materials and you know, I suppose, have you, I suppose, have you ever seen a prime oak building or a prime oak garage? Yep, you know, they're high quality buildings. They have, a, I suppose, a large sense of gravitas. They've, they're big, like thick oak t timber posts. And that, like, that's what we want to put there. Just from a visual po point of view, it, w it will look better. Like, trust me, they're not cheap buildings. And it's not going to look like a cheap garden shed, which is what essentially the parish council have said. Basically, got to yeah. no, but my question there. Thank you, Councillor Parry. Then, Councillor. Thank you. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. I just wonder whether you can advise um, what sort of level of engagement you've had with the parish council over this change of direction in terms of design materials. We have spoken with Councillor Fielding um, about it, and we have spoken at the parish council meeting in 
February, I believe. Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think you mentioned Wavy Oak, Wavy Edge. Yeah. I'm not sure that there was an example shown on the screen there because that, to my mind, I think it said softwood and it was cladding. So, it says, so the parish councils stipulate that they would like large feather or wany edge cladding. Cladding, not wavy edge. No, I've said that is feather, feather edge cladding in softwood. That is not that is the cladding that's proposed to be used on the outside of the house, but that of, of the garage. But that is not. So where it says the parish council say they would like large feather edge or wainy timber edge cladding, and that is feather edge cladding. I thought you mentioned that you are having oak wavy edge. No, I never said that. Ah, beg, beg your pardon. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Councillor Adam. Um, regarding the aesthetic of the uh, timber cladding, uh, for softwood, um, uh, how would that need to be treated to be re remain weathertight? Will that age naturally or will that need treating? And will that then tie into the aesthetic of similar buildings in the village or will that depend on how they treat it? So we weren't planning to stain or treat them as per uh, our case officer's recommendations in March of last year. So they were aged naturally and be in keeping with the village. Okay. Um, are there are no further questions. If, if the committee were minded to ask for them to be stained or treated in a particular colour, would that be something you would be amenable to? Yep. All right, thank you. In that case, I don't think anyone's got any other questions. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Right, we now move to our final speaker, Councillor Fielding, ward member. Thank you very much, Chairman and members of the committee. Right, Councillor Fielding, you have five minutes. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, when I find my paperwork, there we go. Um, I've, I'm here to support the parish council. And while over the past two and a half years that I've been their district council, I've been frustrated in their views by the lack of support by both the planning and the enforcement of SDC. The planning matters that is before you is an example of their frustration. I arranged a meeting with the planning officer in John Town to agree the materials and the colour. And I would like um, the question to um, the planning officer whether that is the timber that we discussed and agreed. We also discussed the plan showing that stone had been agreed in the planning meeting of, the 26th of 2016 before my election. The plans definitely showed stone, not timber, which is the reason for this hearing. And this was confirmed by the planning officer. This resolves around the problems of the developer being allowed to get away with what he wants rather than conforming to what has been agreed by a planning committee and the officer. In, my, in the opinion of the parish council, SDC is not taking the concern over planning decisions seriously. I'm in full support of the parish council and it must be borne in mind that the neighboring development on the north side is also a cause of a great deal of upset and anger within the village. The developer has been allowed to start work before construction management plans have been signed off and agreed. Enforcement appears unwilling to take action to put a stop on the early development of the commencement of work. I've had to deal with two schemes that have got underway without paperwork being completed and the planning officer rushing to catch up. In the two cases, I've got the officer to visit the site to hear the frustrations of the parish council. And I hope the committee will understand the parish's concern and also the support we need from SDC when it, we represent our ward. We must be forthcoming and prevent the developer from walking all over the planning department. That is. Thank you, Councillor Fielding. 
Yes, questions. Uh, Councillor Richards. Thank you, Councillor Fielding. Um, clearly, uh, we can't make a decision on any enforcement action that might be pending or is, is currently undergoing. However, um, the impression you've just given me is that uh, there is enforcement action taken on this site for these changes. Am I misunderstanding that, or, or are you telling me that this is technically a retrospective application? It would appear to be a retrospective because um, we have agreed what, we, what was on the plans, but later uh, it transpired that they wanted to put timber on. They bought the timber, as I understand it, and they're prepared to go ahead in a fortnight's time on building them. So, so they haven't actually started, so therefore it's not, you know, buying stuff is irrelevant. They're actually starting, yeah. so they haven't started, so it's not retrospective. Okay, that's helpful. Um, from a planning perspective, um, obviously we need to have very sound planning reasons to refuse this application mm -hmm. if we were minded to do so. You haven't, I, I didn't fully grasp what your planning reasons were. If you could re-articulate them for me, that would be very helpful. Um, I think it's CS9, is it, that deals with, I can't remember which one deals with sensitivity um, within the area and um, other matters to do with, I th it's either 9 or 5, I can't remember. But ultimately but what you think. sensitivity, also within the fact that it's overlooked by the AONB, which is above it, which has, um, which will be affected. Um, and the basic effect is what happened on the north side, which has we, 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 we unfortunately can't take into consideration what's happened on the north side. So just, just to reiterate, and so I'm absolutely clear, it's the sensitivity and the design um, uh, that, that you are most concerned about. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions for the ward member? In that case, Councillor Fielding, thank you. Right, <coughs> points of clarification. Can we just just clarify, is this a retrospective application, first of all? No. Thank you. <laughs> just wanted that confirmed. Uh, any other points of clarification? Councillor Parry. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just would seek some clarification from the officers on CS 9.3.84 where it states um, it involves the involvement of the local residents and communities in the design of development. Um, and it is important that engagement with local communities both early on in the design process and meaningful so that local communities have real opportunities to influence the outcome of the design process. Can you just confirm what weight we should be giving to that point of the core strategy, please? Two seconds. Sorry about that, Chair. Um, if I understood the question, uh, Councillor Parry was referring to paragraph 3.8.4 in the core strategy, which is supporting text which explains how the design process should go on. As we heard from the, the developer, there has been engagement with the Parish Council. Um, we're also at a position where there's a difference of opinion between the developer and the Parish Council. Uh, you have a, a recommendation from your officers who consider that the, the proposal as put in front of you is acceptable uh, and that's based effectively on the wording of the policy and it's the wording of the policy that's critical uh, and the wording of the policy invites you to make a planning judgment. <coughs> your officers have made that planning judgment and I think paragraph two is probably the critical one. Um, the proposals including layout and orientation will be sensitive to the setting existing built form, neighbouring uses landscape character etc then we look going into the second para second sentence proposals will reflect the context of the locality ensuring a continuity of key design features that i think is the, is the critical phrase thank you chair councillor richards um, thank you chair so um i'm just uh, I'm, I'm getting it right in my head the number of um garages that are changing 
Um, you, you've said four, so plots two, three, four, and five are changing from Horton Stone to uh, Timberclad. And then there is a further garage, single bay garage at plot 10 is going to be, is it red brick? Is that correct? So half of them are changing Sorry. and the other half are staying as were. Plot one, that's an integral garage. Plot two, doesn't that doesn't change. Plot two has uh, a detached garage, that's changing. Plot three, detached garage, which is changing. Four and five also have the detached garages. Plot six, that stays the same. Um, seven and eight, do, 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 don't have the garages, as far as I can recall, and, and uh, nine uh, just has parking at the rear, and it's ten that has the garage there. So, um, so, so again, uh, to yeah. get it right in my head That's while I'm deliberating this, well, you, know, I mean you say half, but seven and eight and nine don't even have garages. Yeah. Um, so, uh, of the seven that do, five of them are changing. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, five. Five are changing. Thanks. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, Councillor Dixon, I'm coming back to you. Can I ask the officers, the, the examples that we were shown in the photographs where oak cladding or cladding has been used, are all of those examples oak wavy board cladding as opposed to what I think is proposed here, soft wood cladding? Truthfully, I, I don't know if they are. If it is oak, it's, it, it, it's, it's wavy edge boarding, but um, I don't, it could be softwood. Yeah. Councillor Richards. Um, another thing that's just struck me that it's, this is, in, to my way of thinking, this is quite a significant change in the design and layout of the overall uh, of the overall um, development. Why? Why is there scope for this to be changed under a discharge of a condition and not requiring a full vary application to be submitted? Uh, I, I think, Chair, I, I'd approach that question from the other direction. Um, <clears throat> the planning permission was granted with a condition requiring materials to be agreed. Um, the expectation was that the whole development would be built in, in Haunton Stone. Um, that's not what's come forward as part of this ch discharge of conditions and what we have to consider is whether this is acceptable in its own right not why it's changed from a previous material it's this material is this material appropriate so can I just go back on that um, I obviously don't have the benefit of seeing the original application um, the con there was no condition to say that these garages will be Haunton Stone it was a, we might do it in Horton Stone, but we'll agree this stuff for how we're going to do it afterwards. Is that correct? Is that what you're telling me now? Yes, the, the expectation was, when permission was granted, that they would be built in Horton Stone. Yes. Uh, but it was an expectation, it wasn't a requirement. And even if it had been a requirement, Chair, we can always reconsider those requirements subject to an application. Uh, of course, and and I, I think that's where I was getting to. We can, of course, we consider it under a vary. We're yeah. not doing that here, and I think your explan explanation now has explained to me why we're not considering it as a vary, why we're seeing it as a condition. Correct. So I appreciate your, your help. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Fielding mm. has indicated he'd like to come back in. Councillor Field, I, I'm, I'll allow it, but it's got to be a clarification of a point of fact. And I will have to invite the applicant back up as well in the spirit of fairness, if he wants to, in a second, sir, not just yet. Go for it. Two points of fact. One is that the original plans that were shown at the planning application showed stone. The second point is that since February, since the, d the change of use of the buildings, I don't recall, A, discussing it. I don't recall them coming back to the parish council which I regularly attend, and so I think that there, is a, there isn't the lack of consultation with the parish. In terms of what Councillor Fielding has just mentioned, those plans that he would have seen originally would have been indicative plans, would they not? But, yes, Chair, as, as it, we've established, the plans indicated an expectation that Haunton Stone would be used, uh, but 
members did not, sorry, did it go to committee? It was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was committee, committee decision. decision. So members did not require a haunt and stone uh, and we put the normal materials condition on, which is why we're here today discharging that condition. So the every stage came back to planning and the parish council would have been informed? Yes. Okay. Councillor Fielding, I'll have to ask you to retire from the committee at this point again. Um, you're welcome to come back, sorry, I should say to the applicant at this point. You're welcome to speak if you want. It's your choice. Is there anything you'd like to say in response to that additional question? Is there anything that anyone would like to ask me? Any questions? No. You're happy? Okay. Back to points of clarification, Councillor Richards. So that, that, that was obviously raised another point of clarification in, in terms of um, how the original conditions were put. Um, I've seen many times, and I'm pretty sure most uh, developments have the condition built out in accordance with submitted plans. Uh, clearly, from what, what I've just picked up there, this, th there were uh, submitted plans and they showed Horton Stone. Uh, how, we, how do we deal with this? Uh, I mean, clearly we're looking at a discharge condition, but one condition says one thing, one says another, there's a conflict, and I'm concerned that a, a procedural issue could come back and cause us a problem. Perhaps we want to seek legal advice. I'm not sure I'm seeing a conflict. Dale, what do you think? Yeah. Yes, I, th I think I, I agree with you that I'm, I'm not really seeing the problem that Councillor Richards says. Uh, it, it identifies. No, I think I understand the question. Let me, let me just yeah. develop on that and then by all means come back. Um, what is shown on approved plans um, is often at a high level of information uh, and the, w we, we drill into that high level of information through the conditions that we impose and through the submission on those conditions. This, this application is, let, let's be absolutely frank about this, unique in that the Parish Council was heavily involved in the selection of materials at the time the application was originally going through and we had negotiations with the applicant and that is why he showed uh, Haunton Stone at that time. Um, but we did not condition it to allow flexibility, to allow later agreement of materials because that is our normal practice. So there was no departure from normal practice. Um, that the applicant has now come forward with uh, timber cladding rather than Haunton Stone uh, is not something that, that officers invited or expected um, but it's something that we're dealing with. It's perfectly legitimate for the applicant to make that request and it's perfectly legitimate for us to consider whether actually in planning terms those amended materials are acceptable or not. I hope that's hit the nail. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm debating whether or not it's appropriate for an applicant to make these submissions. I absolutely accept that. I'm, my concern is over procedural one or whether it should or shouldn't be a vary over um, a discharge. I'm uh, clearly you're here to give us guidance. Um, it's here under a discharge anyway. I can only base my decision making now on what you're telling me and that that, that is a matter of fact and law. So um, I'm, this I, is the correct way to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that that, that and satisfied that that is the case. Okay. Any other points of clarification? Debate. Who, who wants to start with this? Oh, Councillor Richards. I've, I've over been for a while, so I might as well keep going. Um, look, I'm entirely unhappy about the uh, submission. I'm not buying that um, a developer has come forward to say actually it's going to look nicer if we do it this way. At the end of the day, a, a developer is, uh, whilst providing an appropriate development, also looking at their bottom line. Um, now that is not a planning reason or a, plan, uh, a consideration in planning terms. So whilst I'm entirely unhappy with it, I can't find a planning reason to prevent this from happening. And I don't think I'm, I'll be alone in saying I'm unhappy with it. I'm sure there will be other people around this table that are in a similar position. Um, and certainly that has been expressed by um, our, our district council and the, the parish council. But we have to have a planning reason, and I can't find one. So unless someone else can, I propose that we do go with the officer's recommendation and approve. Okay. Anybody else? Councillor Parry. I have to say, Councillor Richards basically took the words out of my mouth. I have terrific sympathy with the Parish Council on this application because they have gone 
beyond the usual realms to really make sure that this particular it's quite a landmark site in Tyson. I actually know Tyson pretty well. To make sure that they actually had a development that really sat really well, particularly in view of its close proximity to Red Horse Close. Um, and they've, they've, they've gone to huge lengths to make sure that they had the Horton Stone throughout. And then it's like coming through the back door and we'll put put this on and it's and I am like Councillor Richards I cannot find a serious plan, material planning reason to reject this but I am very unhappy about it and I think it's very sad that when a parish council is so passionate about making sure they get all the right materials in the village, which has a great in and Tyso of all places, because you've got lower Tyso, middle Tyso, and upper Tyso, and it's like a communication of co a, a communi community link of three different villages, and I just think it's very sad. But we are forced, I'm afraid, with our arms tied behind our backs, and I have no alternative but to second Councillor Richard's proposal. Thank you. Councillor Crump? Yeah, I'm saying in my line of work, I like to have degrees of certainty. Um, but we seem to have a lot of uncertainty, or we did have uncertainty, until we had the debate and Councillor Richard's uh, interrogated Dale. Uh, very well, by the way, Councillor Richard, so I've got no problems with that. Thank you. Um, but I think we need to learn from this and make sure that when we have something come forward like this again with our materials you could say it's a material consideration sorry about that um, but I think we need to make sure this doesn't happen again um, we've had we've had the parish come forward with their views quite rightly so we need to make sure if we do make any ambiguity uncertainty is removed from the process I know we, ha we have some areas of um, discretion and some the decisions are left to, the, to planning chair and cons consultation officers but I think there is a learning point from this application and hopefully we can take that forward as well right there's nobody else wanting to speak in the debate oh council Adam just briefly like to lend support to that argument and say that this does seem to be a show of bad faith between Parish Council and the developer, and that has been reinforced by the passionate um, statements by the Parish Council and the, and the ward member. So, if I would like le to lend my support to an investigation to what can be done in the future to, to further clarification on these sorts of matters. Okay. I'll just add my thoughts as well, then, seeing as we're finishing up here. I think you're right. I think this would have been much better had the Parish Council been all the and you're right, this, is, this application has been going around for a very long time now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I've seen this at this committee, what, three times? At least now. Um, so it's been back and forth so many times, and it's such a shame to see that the thoughts and the wishes of the parish council have been ignored. From an aesthetic point of view, I've got to add my own thought. I actually quite like the timber, to be honest with you, but that's just me being totally honest and just to annoy everybody, but I quite like it. But, but you're right, we should, where we can, we should, tr I'm, you're wrong. yeah, I'm wrong, there you go, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I quite like it, but there we go. But when, when you do have an agreement, when you are consulting with a parish council, I think that, you know, you're, it's required of you and you're responsible to keep to that. That's your, that's what you've agreed. A deal's a deal. Um, anyway, there we are. It's proposed, it's seconded, unless anybody else wants to speak, should we go to the vote? And all those in favour? Unanimous Chairman. Okay. In that case, the uh, committee resolves to grant application reference DISCN slash 0034, zero, sorry, 304 slash 18. That is our final application tonight. We do have urgent business, um, and that is for me to ask the committee. Um, are we all content to continue with the start time of 6.15 for this committee in future? Uh, show of hands, everyone happy with 6.15? Unless you want to say otherwise. 
I was, I was just going to say the only reason we carried it over from the last meeting is because we wanted to make sure you, oh. as, as chair, got an, uh, a say. We were, we were satisfied then that, that it was 6.15, <laughs> but we didn't want to... Oh, well. um, can I also say thank you for, you for chairing last meeting? Right, I appreciate it. I, enjoyed I had it. a great holiday. Thanks for that. Anyway, um, if there's no other business, thank you very much, everybody. Meeting closed.